Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a 5-Minute Friday on Hunky Vape. It's the 9th of October 2020 and this is your 5-Minute Friday Vaping News and Advocacy Report. Let's jump right in. First story comes from ATHRA, the Australian Tobacco Harm Reduction Association. Well, if you've been following the activities down in Australia lately, you found out that the uh, Therapeutic Goods Administration has been holding webinars this past week to update stakeholders on the new regulations concerning vaping and nicotine. This news comes from Professor Skerritt, and it's a mixed bag. Good news is it's going to be easier for doctors to prescribe nicotine. At least it is compared to what they originally proposed. Approval for each individual patient is no longer going to be needed. And your doctor can prescribe you nicotine for a period of 12 months. TGA is planning on having training for doctors and pharmacists who are interested in this requirement. If your local pharmacy does not stock liquid nicotine, you may be able to purchase it from an online pharmacy. More good news. However, here's the bad news. The TGA is committed to a prescription model because of safety issues. They're concerned about the great dangers of nicotine when it comes to child poisoning. They claim that nicotine is not great stuff and it is quite harmful substance, even though most vapors would disagree with this. In the doses that it's used for vaping, nicotine is a relatively benign and child poisoning is very rare. However, more bad news. The cost of vaping is going to increase. And this is common sense here because every time you get a third party involved in the distribution of a product, they're going to want their profit margin out of it too. So when you go to a pharmacy to get your prescription filled, pharmacy's got to make their profit. When you go to your doctor's office to get your prescription in the first place, well, guess what? That health clinic where that doctor's at is going to want to cut too. And let's not forget about the fact that now this stuff is being imported by somebody since you're no longer going to be able to import it. And that importer is going to be charging their excise tax per se on your products. Professor Scarrett said that uh, vape shops will still be able to sell hardware and nicotine-free e-liquids, so businesses will not be affected. Yeah, well, that seems very unlikely. If you can get it all in one place, you're going to get it all in one place. However, that's their stance on the situation. Jumping across the pond to New Zealand. Now, if you haven't been following the news over in New Zealand, Parliament in New Zealand legalized vaping in August. Well, here we have Hamilton City Council decided that they're going to ban it in September. I know councillors love making policies, but this won't do anything more to protect the kids. Vaping is now strictly regulated, including the sale of limited flavors. Advertising is banned. And there's significant sanctions in place if anybody sells products to anybody under 18. Banning vaping in Hamilton City streets parks, and open spaces is not going to add any value. In fact, all it does is make it harder for smokers to switch to vaping. Because why would you bother when they're both treated exactly the same? They're both taxed exactly the same. Vaping is the reason why they have a record low 12.5% overall smoking rate. And it's incredibly effective at getting smokers off of deadly combustible cigarettes. Now you're going to be penalizing vapors and penalizing the very thing that keeps thousands of people off of cigarettes. It's kind of like banning fast food chains because they're bad for you. Then banning weight loss centers because they remind you of the food chains. Makes absolutely no sense and is deeply disappointing for ex-smokers who have turned vapors. Well, the only thing, a good thing that came out of Hamilton City's little fiasco here is the New Zealand Labor Party's policy on plastics is a step in the right direction. They have partnered with TerraCycle to form a recycling program where you can recycle from your own home. 
participants simply sign up to the program on TerraCycle.com, collect their waste in any available cardboard box. You can put up to four batteries per shipment, print off a shipping label, and drop it at your local post office. E-cigarette waste, just like any other electronic waste, is particularly difficult to recycle due to the complexity of separating out the different materials. However, in this innovative solution, TerraCycle is now going to be starting this unique recycling program and process which could potentially save millions of pods, e-waste, and batteries from ending up in New Zealand's environment. For every kilogram of vaping equipment sent to TerraCycle, Vape and Alt donates $1 towards the charity Sustainable Coastlines, which works to keep New Zealand's coastlines beautiful. Our next story comes from Yahoo Finance. Actually, the story is written by the Canadian Vaping Association once again. And they state that a study finds vaping could prevent 6.6 million deaths. There's been a resurgence in organizations questioning if vapor products truly reduce a smoker's harm. Despite ample evidence in all major health organizations stating vaping is less harmful than smoking. Well, this study led by Dr. David Levy at Georgetown University Medical Center demonstrates the profound harm reduction of smokers switching to vaping. The study found that 6.6 million premature deaths in the United States could be avoided by smokers switching to vaping. This study was actually broken down into two different scenarios. You have an optimistic scenario where the smoking rates fall to 5% over a period of 10 years, and you have a pessimistic scenario where the smoking rate only drops to 10%. In an optimistic scenario, 6.6 .6 million premature deaths can be avoided over a 10-year period, and 87.6 million collective years of life can be saved. In the pessimistic scenario... That number drops to 1.6 million premature deaths avoided and 20.8 million years of life saved. Why do they have two scenarios, you ask? Well, this study is a great reminder that when the vape industry describes its product as life-saving, it is not being hyperbolic. There are real-life consequences to poor regulation. When a province bans flavors or implements excessive taxation on faulty studies, or misrepresented data, public health suffers great harm. Yeah? Jumping over to uh, Newfoundland's vape tax, also reported by the Canadian Vaping Association. <sighs> Newfoundland has announced 20% tax on vapor products to be implemented January 1st, 2021. <laughs> you know, it's pretty interesting. This article highlights the fact that when you increase taxes, you reduce usage. We all know that. That's an accepted axiom. It's the reason for these sin taxes, as they like to call them. Okay. Well... The problem is when you treat combustible cigarettes and electronic cigarettes in the same boat and you tax them the same, you're kind of defeating the whole purpose of having an electronic cigarette in the first place, don't you think? PESCO and other researchers drew upon sales data from 35,000 retailers across the nation over a seven-year period and concluded that for every 10% increase in e-cigarette prices, sales of vaping products dropped 26%. Yeah. The higher taxes on e-cigarettes resulted in an 11% increase in the sale of traditional cigarettes. They concluded in the study that they estimate that for every one e-cigarette pod no longer purchased as a result of an e-cigarette tax, 6.2 extra packs of cigarettes are purchased instead. The public health impact of e-cigarette taxes in this case is likely negative. Yeah? The impact of e-cigarette taxes on smoking rates. Evidence from Minnesota, which found that taxing vaping products would lead to an 8.1 increase in tobacco use 
and smoking sensation decrease of 1.4%. It also found out that a vapor products had not been taxed, an additional 32,400 adults would have quit smoking. Governments everywhere have the opportunity to drastically reduce smoking rates by supporting access to vaping. Studies have shown vaping to be the most effective cessation product globally. Yet because vaping resembles the act of smoking, it is often miscast. We encourage the government of Newfoundland to work with the industry to better understand vaping and the harm reduction opportunity it offers. Our last story for today comes from Germany. Addiction researchers advocate political education about e-cigarettes. The new Alternative Drugs and Addiction Report 2020 was presented in Berlin today. The editors focus of the report is already defined in the foreword. Damage minimization. Tobacco harm reduction. The aim of this approach is to keep the health and social consequences of substance use as low as possible instead of just urging abstinence. Because abstinence doesn't work. When you ban smoking, you relegate these smokers to go and do it somewhere else. When you ban vaping, it does the exact same thing. Clear evidence for harm reduction through e-cigarettes. It's clear that health damage caused by the consumption of e-cigarettes is less than that of tobacco cigarettes, and that this can reduce the number of smokers. Therefore, based on scientific findings, we advocate that smokers who cannot or do not want to quit are recommended to switch to e-cigarettes. This should also be stated in the medical guidelines. Screening Diagnosis and Treatment of Harmful and Dependent Tobacco Use, which is currently under the process of being revised. Flavors and cost is important for those who switch. The report's authors are of the opinion that e-cigarette flavors are important for smokers who are willing to switch. Empirical research results also show that aromas are an important reason why tobacco smokers switch to electronic cigarettes. It is therefore advocated that the variety of flavors should continue to be retained as they help with the switch and reduce the likelihood of relapse to combustible tobacco. Conclusion But it also shows the novel products such as e-cigarettes or tobacco heaters, which have taken into account that they also have a role to play in efforts to achieve harm reduction and a healthier society. Therefore, politicians should not look at these products with blinkers on principle. That's it for today. Vaping is 97% safer than smoking deadly combustible cigarettes. You all have a wonderful weekend and keep on vaping.